David uh, Dietz is with us, Managing Principal and Senior Portfolio Strategist, PPAC Private Wealth Management. I'm glad you're here, David Dietz, because I just, we noticed the sell-off and I said, oh, I guess everybody, you know, we heard everybody wanting 50 basis points in November. They got spoiled in, in the last round, maybe. Well, we just got comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, and certainly they were blander and less conviction of it, about exactly what the path of monetary policy was going to be going forward. And so that slightly more hawkish tone, I think, has caused the market to trade down a little bit here. I mean, let's face it. We had on Friday the PCE numbers. Yeah. When you strip out food and energy, the core was just a little hotter than expected. We've got markets continuing to hit all-time highs. You've got massive stimulus, both fiscal and monetary, starting to emanate out of China. So perhaps there's less reason for Jerome Powell to predict, you know, a really cooler than expected labor market going forward. Yeah. He doesn't know what But you numbers. said Friday is going to be key, right? All eyes at this point are on uh, Friday's September jobs report. Right now, I'm expecting, most people are expecting around 140,000 jobs created. If that comes in light, I think people will, again, place those bets for a 50 basis point cut in November. And conversely, if we start to drift towards 200,000, you'll see uh, people starting to... Uh, you know, second guess the Federal Reserve and why they did a 50 basis point cut. So we got to wait and see what the Fed does. You got to wait on the election. China stimulus has been done, but there's hopes for more stimulus. You may have the port looming, the port um, situation. That being said, how would you categorize how you feel about the market? Are you just in a wait and see mode? Are you bullish long term or are you worried? Well, certainly there's reasons to be cautious for market action through the election day. I mean, this is an election where nobody knows what's going to happen. And there's nothing that Wall Street hates more than uncertainty. Who's going to win? You know, I've heard, for example, one major brokerage yeah. company said they like emerging market stocks, but don't do anything till after the election, because if one can't elected, then yeah. the uh, tariffs are going to be so great as to uh, put a wet blanket on the prospects for some of those emerging market economies. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Having said that, I do believe that once we get past the election, barring any kind of unforeseen catastrophe, I think that could be an ideal time. Why? You're going to see earnings grow as much as 14 percent next year. That's always the most important metric. Second, you've got basically yeah. a dovish Fed. As they say, don't fight the Fed. But of course, it's not just our central bank. Look over in Asia. We've got China, and they're basically are all in now on stimulus. So your second largest economy is also adding a, a stimulus. Interest rates continue to come down. You've got the 10-year treasury under 4%. Yeah. Most people say, I can't make my long-term retirement plans with 3.7% per year over the next decade. So i got to keep pushing right, money into right. stocks. Look, everybody always wanted their money manager to make 5, 6, 7%. That was sort of the status quo, right? I mean, 3.5% or so, 4% wouldn't be enough. Um, let's talk about your picks. I know that you, you mentioned merging markets, international, small caps, those are and real estate. Those are a lot of the areas that you like to follow. Uh, you're not saying MAG-7. A lot of folks think, oh, that's overvalued. You do have a couple of key names here. Um, you have Bristol-Myers, Hershey, and BHP Group. Let's go through those one by one. Why do you like those? And why could those work over the next, what, six months, 12 months, five years? What are we talking <laughs> all about? All the above. All yeah? the above. Okay. So let, let's start with the theme. The theme yes. is all about dividends. Uh, two of the stocks have dividend yields are almost four times the S&P 500. That would be Bristol Meyer and BHP. Um, Hershey has a dividend yield that's at least twice what the S&P 500 is. And if interest rates are coming down and you're no longer getting that 5% of your money market, but you could be closer to 35 by next summer, people are going to say, where am I going to find the income? They're going to look for the income-paying stocks. Right. But, you know, history shows that it's not just a high dividend <laughs> that makes you a successful investor. It's a growing dividend. And what I'd like particularly, for example, about Hershey and Bristol-Myers, these are dividend aristocrats. That means not only right. do they pay the dividend, but they yeah. cranked it up annually each year for at least the last 25 years. 
Um, just to fo drill down a little bit, let's look at BHP. I'm not going to give you Chinese names, but I love BHP as kind of an indirect way to play two things. One is the revival of the Chinese economy. It has not revived yet, but you, we can see they're going to do everything possible to get it back on its feet and the green revolution. So, for example, uh, just today, um, BHP is talking about one million more ton demand in copper every year for at least 2035. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, copper is going to be needed for the Chinese real estate market. Chi uh, copper is going to be needed for much of the new technology which is going to try uh, and green our energy production. And of course, they're big on iron. Iron is a cyclical commodity, but if China is successful at getting back on its feet, uh, BHP is in the pole position. What if I'm wrong? What I love about BHP, this is a company that's been around for about 170 years. It's the largest yeah. of the commodity yeah. players. And so industry bad news can actually be good news for them as the smaller, less well capitalized competitors go by the wayside. Yeah, it's interesting because you go for these dividend payers. They're dividend aristocrats, meaning that they've raised or they kept the same raised dividends over 25 years, right? Um, that shows the longevity, that these are not willy-nilly. They didn't just show up. Hershey, where does that fit in? Hey, well, tomorrow is the first day of October, and what comes at the end of October? Halloween! Your <laughs> biggest holiday ever for chocolate sales. Now, do you want to have a no-name player that you want to bet on, or would you like to bet on the largest provider of chocolates in the United States with a 35% market share? That would be Hershey's. Yeah. I'm thinking of Reese's right now, that combination of chocolate and peanut butter. So, you know, here's so a company who's got all these brand names in. If the economy, you know, falls through the trap door or the yeah. economy starts to soar, I think people are still going to be eating chocolates. Now, it is true, their margins have been under pressure with huge price increases in cocoa and in sugar. But one thing we know about commodities, it is cyclical. As prices go up, more acreage is put into production. I think those prices will come down. Again, if you're the largest player, tough industry conditions are good because the smaller wannabes go away uh, back into their caves. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Michelle uh, uh, Bush, or Brush, excuse me, she's the CEO, very, very well thought of. Also, there's a lot of people who prefer salty snacks, not just chocolate, right. and they've made some strategic uh, acquisitions in the salty uh, snack food area, and I think they may be able to make some combos, get a little salty and chocolate in one bite. Yeah, yeah, and they do, and they do. You're absolutely right. Uh, all right, good to see you, and happy Halloween. Thank you, Nicole. We know who's going trick-or-treating. <laughs> Somebody, oh, well, I love chocolate. I can't speak for you. But anyhow, David Dietz, great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. David Dietz of PPAC Private Wealth Management, thank you for joining us on the show today.